What's going on guys? Welcome back to Michigan Gray Outdoors. I'm your host, Jason Strowski, AKA The Polak. Today I have for you the Lone Wolf Custom Gear Crossover Climber. Let's get stuck in. All right, so here it is, the Lone Wolf Custom Gear Crossover. Very expensive stand, a very innovative stand, and we're gonna get into all the nitty gritty details today. I do wanna give a couple disclaimers before we get into the video. Number one, this could be a longer video. So there's gonna be chapters in the slider bar. If you wanna skip ahead, feel free to do so. Number two disclaimer is this has a 250 pound weight rating. I am actually over that rating. So typically I'm hovering around 265. Right now I'm 269. Back in deer season, I was heavier. I was like 270. Uh, probably with hunting gear, I was probably like, I don't know, 275, 280. And this is only rated for 250. So I was taking it beyond the limit. I don't recommend that. So you need to be under the weight limit for this stand. This, you know, being above the weight limit, I basically void the warranty. And, you know, if anything happens, you know, it's on me. So I'm not advocating to anybody to use this stand if you're over the weight rating, but I will say that I have thoroughly inspected this stand. I've probably been in about 10, 12 trees and there's no bends, there's no breaks. I put T-square on everything and check it and this thing is still flawless. Looking at the stand right here in this configuration, this is a TX5 EOP pack. This is how I hunted with it. I wanted something a, a more of a minimalist style pack. Now I haven't got the custom gear half pack. I might try to acquire that this year and see how that fits on this stand. But as you can see, this is an extremely tight little package. You know, it'll probably have some, you know, obviously you have some clothes in here and, you know, maybe a jacket attached to this. It, it bumps it out a little bit. But you can see, you know, with this stand, you're looking at less than two inches in the, the cross section here. And then this bag fits really nicely on there. There's a little hook right here that they've integrated into the, the stand where you can hang your pack. I did put some tape on there, but just because I didn't, you know, want, you know, sometimes with this water jet cut stuff or machined aluminum, it's a little sharp and I didn't want to tear up my strap here and it was perfect. Little hockey tape on there and it really, you know, protected it. This stand will come with the new Lone Wolf Custom Gear backpack straps. These have the load lifters built in. The shape is kind of contoured a little differently. Really did a nice job with these straps and they're easy to put on and very comfortable. As you see this stand minus the bag, it's sitting at right at 13.4 pounds. So I think the bear weight on this stand is like 11 and a half and then when you add the webbing you add the straps here and then the seat it brings up to 13.4 so extremely lightweight by far the lightest climber on the market in my opinion probably one of the safer climbers in the market and i will get into that later into the video why i think this is a safer climber now it is a smaller climber this is meant to be a hundred percent run and gun you know this is not your summit climber that you're used to you know you're not going to take a nap in this climber it's not probably going to be for guys for all day sits now i can tell you what i didn't put any all day sits into it but i feel like using a saddle and some different methods you could you could definitely sit all day in this if you wanted to but most guys you know they're not going to do all day sits in this climber you know my opinion is that this thing is just really built for run and gun style hunters you know there's a whole slew of people that are kind of advocating that you know climbers are not the way to go you know we used to use climbers back in the day when we mobile hunted me included when i was younger i used a lot of climbers but now you know it's better to use a stick and a stand because you're not hunting for trees you're hunting for deer you know and that's true to an extent but i think a climber does have its place out there in the woods and you got to be particular about how your your plan is to hunt you know me particularly when i scout now i've always marked kill trees in my onyx as i scouted but now i'm actually distinguishing between a saddle setup a hang and hunt setup and or a climber setup i think in gun season in michigan this thing is going to be amazing and that's 
pretty much what I used it for. I did a little bow hunting out of it, but I really wanted this for, you know, hunting in northern Michigan. Sometimes I'll go up there. There's a lot of great trees for climbers, as well as some of those great funnels in the rut. You can usually find a good straight tree to put a climber in. So another tool in the arsenal. That's what it is. It's a tool. If you live down south and you got Georgia pines and you got, you know, in the Carolinas, you got all nice straight trees. You're hunting in Alabama. I mean, this thing is going to be deadly and it's going to be one of the lightest combinations on the market. So I wanted to show you kind of the configuration I have. This, this TX5 EOP pack is really easy to put on here. It just uses J hooks and then um, they just have these little, I don't know, these little these little ears that kind of go on. I'll show you a, a close up vid of it, but then you can just pop it right off. So once this pops off, this is how I have my climber set up. It has these cross straps. The seat, I take the seat off. The reason being is I, when I first got to stand, I didn't have this seat. The seat wasn't out yet, and I didn't want to wait for the stand, so I said ship it anyway, because it had the webbing seat. This seat came in, I got it in the off season. I played with it a bunch. I don't love climbing with the seat. What's nice about this stand is you don't have to climb with it. You can just put it on, you know, once you get up in the tree. And that's, I think, what I'm gonna do going forward. I think it's just so much easier to manage. So you just pop this off and I'll actually just create a loop with this. And I probably would do it before I got into the woods. You can just create a little loop there and then you can just attach it to your pack. And when you pull your pack up, it'll just be attached. One of the really good parts of this platform is these T-posts are integrated in the stand. So you can take these straps, you can crisscross them across. You have T-posts here, here, and even back here. So there's multiple spots if you wanna be able to lash gear down. And it's a really simple and easy method to lock everything in. Looking at the stand here, you can see the profile extremely thin. There's really, other than you know the straps making noise, it really doesn't make any noise and it'll probably if there is noise it'll be amplified because of this the speaker i have right here but there's a little knob right here and you loosen that up and then there's a keyway in the back so once that keyway's moved you can just pull the section off here and usually if you're hunting you're going to have it on the ground and you can just lift this thing up really quietly you know, it's as quiet as you can make it. Is it going to be perfect? No. You know, there's always that little bit of noise when you pull your sticks off your stand, but, you know, you wait for a plane to go over, you wait for some some noise, a wind gust. You know, there's, there's ways to mitigate it by going super slow. One of the really good integrated features in this stand is there's two grommets right here. There's a grommet here and a grommet here. They're the same grommets that are on the Lone Wolf Custom Gear compact sticks. And then there's grommet holes. So when you go to put this baby in, you just line up the little grommets Make sure your webbing isn't there in the way, and then you're good to go. So then once that's done, if it was on the ground, you just push this keyway through, twist it in the back, and it's just a really simple way to connect these two pieces and streamline them, and then you're good to go. You just put your pack on here and you're out of the woods. All right, so we're gonna take this top off again. So just loosen that up. You can hear I pretty much got that off with no noise and we're going to focus on the top section first. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down out of the way. I do want to say one thing about this, these teeth. These teeth are extremely sharp. They're probably too sharp to be honest, but I like that they're that sharp. The reason being is because they really dig into the tree. And if you've ever used a climber, you know, I had a summit. Uh, my uncle's Summit Viper I used a lot. I have a Summit, um, I think it's a Titan SD. And it's those are great stands, but the teeth don't really dig into the tree unless you kind of like work at it a little bit. You might get like a little bit of bite. This stand here is just going to bite like a son of a gun, and that's going to make you more safer. You know, I did see where people were kind of concerned about this. They were kind of putting some sort of a protective sheath on here. But I think maybe it would be good to have some kind of sleeve to put over this. You know, one guy made a, a comment, you know, you're walking with this stand on your back and it's right by your neck. 
you know, I don't know if, if you fell down a hill or something, you could, you could get those teeth into the back of your neck. It's definitely something to think about. I never really thought about it until I saw that comment and I was like, oh shit, you know, that's, that's not, it's not a bad comment. The top section here is extremely light. I didn't get a weight on this, but this is how it is. It's ready to go. You have your little webbing seat here that you can just fold back. Now this traction belt is in the way, but you can kind of use it to hold it back. And then the most ingenious part of this climber is this this half moon design so when you're going up the tree you can easily slide this back and you can really kind of tuck your body against the tree and there's not I think a climber on the market that has a design like this so it was a really great feature by custom gear the sit bar it's a small bar but it's stiff it does work really well. I've climbed several of these trees using just the sit bar. I had no problems with it. Would I like it to be a little bigger, a little wider, just because I'm a bigger guy? Absolutely. But, you know, for its intended use, it works pretty well. So very easily, you can just loosen these up and you fold them out and you tighten them down. And then this section here is ready to climb. Once you have this section here on the tree, it's very easy to set up. You want to try to have this maybe as level as possible, maybe a little pitched up. And as you climb up the tree, the, the diameter of the tree reduces as you go up. The nice thing about the cam system and how they're designed on this stand here is you're going to be able to open this and then you'll be able to adjust your cam as needed and then lock it back down. So obviously as you go up, you're probably going to pull more in. So because as you climb, it'll start dipping down like this so that you're going to pull, pull more of your traction belt in to kind of get it back to this pitch or more level. And as you get up and you climb up, you can continuously do that. Now your bottom platform you have to set. If you've ever used a climber, you have to pitch it up at the bottom because you're not going to be able to adjust that. The top here is designed in a way these cams are out on the outside so you can adjust it. That was a major design change I've seen from the old Lone Wolf climbers. I didn't actually own one of the old hand climbers, but from everybody that I've talked to, they really like this upgrade. They really like this change. It makes it more versatile and is really going to aid in your comfort. When you get to the top of where you want to set up and hunt you can adjust this perfectly dial it in put your seat on and you're you're set to go the one thing that i will suggest is when you get up to that climbing height you're going to really want to kind of jam these teeth in so use the sit bar use some leverage to your advantage and get on there don't jump on it don't smash it but just kind of give it a little bump to really kind of set these teeth in you want to make sure you get a little bite on here because I don't know if you've ever used a climber in the past. You know, if you don't set it and get it in there right, all of a sudden you you stand up and you maybe there's a deer coming in and then the top section just falls down. It's not gonna go anywhere, but it's gonna scare every freaking deer from a mile away. So you wanna make sure you get this thing bit in. Back in the day, in the past, I would always carry a bungee cord with me and I would hook it onto either side and go around the tree, which kind of helps lock this thing in. It's a, it's a problem that plagues all climbers and this climber is no different. I had it fall down on me. You know, I just did a, a test climb the other day when I put a GoPro on my head, I called it uh, taking down the Christmas lights and I was coming down and I didn't set it properly and that top section fell down on me. That was a mistake. It's something that you have to keep in mind when you're using these climbers, it's not like just climbing up some sticks. There's things that you have to keep in mind. You gotta have a harness on. You gotta be tethered in. You have to make sure that you use your straps. There's straps that attach to the platform that hang off. Um, I've seen some people go over and I actually go under and you put them on these knobs here and those are your safety straps. So if you were climbing, you sat on your sit bar and you know something happened and the platform fell down, those straps are going to catch it and you're going to be able to pull the platform back up. It's very important that you follow proper climbing techniques in these climbers because I don't know what the statistics are, but I've heard far more people getting hurt or injured on climbing tree stands versus your regular hang on stand. So always make sure you wear a harness. I actually like using a saddle with this. 
what I do with my saddle as I climb, I set my tether up as high as possible. Now I have started using the Ohm, uh, innovating the outdoors Ohm tether locker to keep my tether from falling. But once you set your tether, you can kind of sit in your saddle a little bit. It helps take a little bit of pressure off of this bar. It helps you feel more secure and it really cradles you and makes you feel safe. And then you can lift your legs up and make that move. Is it slower than not using a harness? Absolutely. Is it maybe louder? I don't know. You know, you're going to have to adjust your tether. It could make noise, but you know, my family requires me to come home after the hunt as your family probably does too. So I think it's highly um, important for us to be safe. Looking at the actual platform here, again, ridiculously lightweight, very, very slim lined. These teeth on the bottom, extremely sharp. Again, you want to be careful with those teeth. I like that they're sharp, but just be careful with it. There's these knobs on either side. You're gonna loosen them up and you can kind of do it to be quiet. When you're setting up, just go slow. And then you can raise this stabilizer bar up. And I use my thumbs to kind of push this up and then tighten these knobs down. And then this thing is ready to go. So this is your actual stabilizer bar. This is what kind of keeps everything stable. And then there's two boot wells on here. So these are where you're gonna put your feet to climb. You can also do it the old way where you put your feet off to the side. I really like the stabilizer bar with the boot cutoffs. I have been able to use my hiking boots, tennis shoes, my muck boots, you know, big 12, size 12 muck boots that I wear in the swamp, you know, just because I was gonna use this in some hardwoods real deep when I went hunting, I was still able to do it, no problem with my muck boots. I had to cross a couple swamps to get to where I wanted to go and it was, it worked out perfectly. So, you know, if you have, you know, a size 18 boot, I don't know if that's gonna fit, but I think anybody, you know, size, you know, seven to, to 14, 15 should have no problems. If you do, like I said, you could also take and put your feet sideways. So one of the really cool features about this is there's integrated straps here. These are your climbing straps. You're gonna wanna use those stabilizer straps, whatever you wanna call them. They're girth hitched on here. So you're gonna take this other end and you're gonna attach it to your top section. Make sure you do it on both sides. You wanna kind of leave it a little loose when you, you go to do your climb. When you get to the tree, you're gonna go ahead, you're gonna undo your cam, go around the tree. You wanna set this at the base of your tree, not level. Remember, when you're going up the tree, that diameter is gonna shrink down. So if you have, you know, this stand is rated for a, a six to 18 inch tree. You know, if you have a 12 inch tree, when you get to the top, it's probably gonna be like, like an eight inch tree or something. So you wanna start with your platform pitched up, okay? So as you climb, it's gonna level out and it's really kind of a guessing game and it, you do get better at it over time with practice. It's very important that you practice in the off season, you get familiar with this equipment before you go up the tree. Now, once I'm set up, you're gonna open your cam, you go around the tree with your traction belt. I'm gonna have this platform pitched up as much as possible. So as I get to the top, I want it to be level. I don't want it pitched down. I don't want it pitched up. I want it to be as level as possible. And it really comes from just experience. You have to get experience in this stand. It climbs extremely well. Does it make noise? Absolutely. It's the same as every climber in the world. It's going to make noise. Does it make more noise than my summit? No, it doesn't at all. I think maybe it even makes a little bit of less noise. And I don't know if that's because it's the machine cut aluminum. It's a little bit different, but I have been able to go on several hunts on this and I didn't think it was anything crazy. Now, once you're climbing, you're going to get that scraping noise, you know, the teeth scraping as you pull this up the tree, that belt's going to be scraping a little bit, depending on the different barks you're on. Yes, there's going to be noise. It's, it's, there's nothing you can do to avoid that. It's just taking your time going slow, not rushing, and then you'll be good to go. Once you get your bottom and your top set up, you're gonna go ahead and put these straps on. These are your safety straps. So if heaven forbid some, th something happened, you dropped your platform, these straps are gonna catch it and you'll be able to kind of pull it up a little bit and you'll be fine. This thing honestly is, in my opinion, one of the safest climbers that I've ever used. I think it's greatly in part because of these teeth. These teeth are so vicious, they bite so good. And as long as there's pressure on this platform, these teeth are gonna bite in good. You still wanna be careful, you wanna take your time, but 
in my opinion, I think that this is one of the easiest climbers to use on the market. The one piece of advice that I will give you once you, you get this the stand here is when you get up to climbing height and you set your platform i always when i get up there i kind of just give it a little bump and that kind of helps drive these teeth in so i'll stand here at the end i'll just give it a little nudge and it'll kind of drive the teeth in now that's great i love the fact that it does that you have to remember before you climb down you got to get those teeth disengaged because they're so big because they're so sharp it does take a you know a couple seconds so when you are sitting in the stand i suggest you sit if you have a saddle you use your saddle you set your tether put your tension on kind of sit in your saddle sit on your sit bar as well and then take your feet and kind of adjust and shimmy this platform you're going to have to lift it up a little bit and you're going to kind of give it i, I call it the foot shimmy you got to give it a little shimmy to get it out of there once you actually get it unlocked from the tree then you're good to go you're in kind of what i call climbing mode you're, you're descending the tree it's not going to lock in as much as it would as you you know once you're up there hunting for two or three hours that thing's going to bite in it's really going to be locked in that that was the one thing that i noticed on the first hunt i took this thing out i climb i send to the tree no problem I hunted till dark and on my way down when I went to get down I'm like damn I, it took me a second to get this thing you know broke loose so it bites really well I think that the benefits of the teeth and, and the safety is worth that little inconvenience and I'm I'm overall I'm, I'm extremely happy with this stand it does have the the ports in here so you can put the sidekick bull holders i put a sidekick right here when i hunted i had the extended version and it worked flawlessly when you're done with your hunt you're going to go ahead and loosen these down and then you're just going to fold it back there's a little bit of noise I'll, I'll stop talking so you can hear it but there's a little bit of noise there very very minor and then you just go ahead and tighten these knobs back up A little bit of noise when you do that but once you tighten those up this stabilizer bar it actually recesses into the platform incredible design gets it extremely flat and it's pretty cool because it's got the little lone wolf in there nice little touch you know putting the branding on there but honestly for for what this stand is it's a run and gun mobile hunting stand is it for everybody no if, if you're a big giant guy it's probably not going to be for you. Honestly, I'm probably pushing it. I'm hoping to get some freaking weight off of this damn body this year because I really want to use this more. And I don't foresee, you know, there being any issues with it, but I just want to be a little bit smaller, a little skinnier. So there's more comfort in the stand. Now, speaking of comfort, when I got this stand originally, I only had the webbing seat and you just slide the webbing here and you sit down it's adjustable you can change it however you want this is all how i used it when i hunted and i would be totally honest with you it wasn't that bad to sit on i like to be in a more of an athletic position more upright and it was very comfortable it wasn't going to be an all-day thing but adding the seat pad here you just attach it there's two spots where you can attach it right here very easily once that seat pad is put on there it's really comfortable they did a good job is it as comfortable as your summit no freaking way summit is the most comfortable stand in the world but this thing does a really good job and to be honest with you for the intended use of a mobile climbing stand i think it's perfect i like the shape on the seat so they kind of put that half moon design in here so it sits just perfectly in that half moon on the webbing and then i guess my only complaint is is when you kind of have to fold this out of the way so you got a deer coming you fold this out of the way you can kind of push these webs back with your legs so they do slide pretty easily you can slide this out of the way but depending on the style of tree you have I did notice where this thing kind of wanted to flop back a little bit so you kind of have to if, if you have enough room you can push it behind one of these knobs and it kind of holds it in so it won't flop back obviously if you're in a deer hunting situation you got a big buck coming in or any deer coming in you don't want this thing flopping down so you got to remember to jam it in there if you can 
This sit bar here, you can use it in the tree however you like. Some guys are just gonna tuck it out of the way because they don't want any interference. Some people like to have it around them just because it gives you a little bit of sense of security. It makes you feel like you have something there, especially if you get really high up in the tree, it makes you feel a little bit more comfortable. I actually, when I hunted with it, I believe I did leave it up and I did have a deer come in and when that deer came in, I stood up, I got my bow and then I just very quietly just kind of tucked it out of the way. I didn't want my bow to hit on it potentially. So, you know, some people were saying you could use it for a gun rest. It's, it's not super tight. Now you can adjust it. I don't know if it'll work that well for a gun rest and it's kind of low when you're sitting there. So you might be able to like get get on there a little bit but i don't necessarily believe that this this is really what it's designed for this is the sit bar you use it to help you climb and just kind of give you a little bit of a sense of security so overall i think this stand is really nice i love the weight i love how it climbs you know it's a little bit noisier than setting up like a 0.5 or a 0.75 with regular sticks you're going to make a little bit no more noise so you just have to kind of take that into consideration you have to think about do I have trees that I can hunt out of this stand with? You know, if you're not gonna take this in the swamp probably. So if you're a swamp hunter, you're probably gonna be better off with like a, a 0.5 or a 0.75 or a Novix Hilo or a B stand or something like that. But if you got a lot of straight skinny trees and you, you know, you could take advantage of them, I think you should definitely check this one out. The price, $1,000, very expensive. You know, other than the, the climbing of the seat, you know, not being able to climb effect super effectively with the seat installed. That's probably my only complaint. And then the second one would be the price. A thousand dollars is is extremely expensive. Now having it, I can definitely say I think it's worth it. But man, it, it's a it's a hard pill to swallow. So you really have to think about it. If are you willing to spend a thousand dollars on this stand, you better make sure you get your use out of it. You better be able to use this in all your trees, in all your situations. So if you're down south, Georgia, Alabama, all those areas that are known to have those tall, skinny trees, I think this would be perfect for you. Up here in Michigan, my style of hunting in the swamps, it's probably not going to be the the tool that I search for every hunt, but it's still a tool that I really like to have. And to be honest with you, I've already kind of been playing with some different options to kind of use this with a saddle and really kind of just open up some different comforts. You know, if you hang in your tether in your saddle, it's just so comfortable, man. You can just hang there. You get this thing locked in where it's not going to fall down. And it's, it's the best of both worlds, in my opinion. So I think if you're, you're interested in this stand and you can stomach the thousand dollars, I think it's totally worth it. Again, if you're over that 250 pound rating, I don't suggest using it. I suggest losing some weight. Don't do as I do, do as I say, but yeah, man, I, I'm pretty happy with this thing. You know, these, these traction belts, I I've never had traction belts before. So they're definitely different as some sort of like a rubber polymer material. And it's my understanding that there's these like, uh, cables that are inlaid here so you know somebody made a comment like that just looks like plastic well it's my understanding that th these are rated extremely well there's there's these metal cables that go through there is a little bit of drawback and i'll try to put some footage over this clip right now is there is a little bit of noise when you're climbing and it's from these cables this this cable goes through this metal tube and it kind of squeaks in there a little bit i don't know if there's a way that you can kind of eliminate that or if it will kind of go away over time but i did notice there was a little bit of squeaking in the tube it's, it's a it's a weird noise a little bit different of a noise it's i don't think it's going to alert every deer in the county it's not that loud but it's definitely there so it's also something to think about and yeah man hopefully this video is helpful for you. Hopefully I answered all the questions. I will be making more videos on this climber here. There's a couple other videos I'm gonna do first before we do anything more with the climber, but I'll probably get back to this in early summer. And definitely one of the videos I wanna talk about 
actually using this stand, this stand. Now I did make a POV climbing video, but I want to make another video where I do like a full, like a kind of like, I'm going to go actually go hunt with it. I'm going to try to be real quiet and maybe I'll do some cool shots with that and just kind of show you guys how I would use this and how I would set it up. I also want to show some different pack options. You saw the TX5 pack on here. I want to see if the wolf pack will fit on here. There's uh, that Lone Wolf Custom Beer half pack. I might pick one of those up this year. So I want to dive into some more details on this stand. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, consider doing that now and hit that bell notification so you'll be notified. But this is going to really going to be a tool in my arsenal. I'm happy to have it. Hopefully you liked this video and uh, that's it, man. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.